seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. All right, hey everyone. Um, <laughs> as my dog throws up. <laughs> um, okay, um, I just wanted to make a video about spaying and neutering your animal. Aspen just got spayed about three weeks ago and there were a couple of things that I thought about that uh, would be good questions to ask your veterinarian and also I got her a couple of things kind of like a mini haul um, Before she got spayed just to help with the healing process and uh, I thought that I'd show you guys all right So the first thing that I'm going to talk about are some things that you should probably get before your dog goes into surgery or your cat goes into surgery um, the number one thing that I would recommend is getting a buster collar and these things are just really helpful because you don't want your animal to be chewing at their sutures after they've gone through surgery. Um, I worked at vet clinics for quite a while and I've seen animals that have um, split open their incision site again and you don't want that to happen. So this is what I would recommend getting, number one. Um, if you have a dog that doesn't chew at anything. Um, so for example, my old dog, she wasn't a chewer and what we would do when she had a surgery is we would take an old t-shirt and we would cut it up so that it fit her really well and it covered her incision site. And that worked out well because no dog likes to wear the cone. And so she was a lot more comfortable with the t-shirt. Unfortunately, with Aspen, my Australian Shepherd, there is absolutely no way that I would be able to put a shirt on her and have it last for more than 30 minutes because she chews through everything. So we had to do the cone with her, unfortunately, but it worked. It kept her away from her incision site and her incision site healed well. Um, one of the things with the cone that I could recommend is that you get a um, very cheap fabric collar because when you come home from the veterinarian you can buy these at vet clinics they will give you something like this which is basically just a piece of bandage a piece of um, gauze like material and this works for the first few days but it stretches out and it's not really good at keeping the cone on for two weeks so if you get a nice little um, cheap fabric collar, you can actually intertwine it into these holes and fit it to your dog so that the cone actually stays on properly. Um, and it's also a lot more comfortable for them because the collar is fitted to their neck. Um, one of the things with these cones is you can get soft cones and you can also get cones that are hard plastic like this, but they've got a nice um, lining of fabric and that'll help with keeping um, both you and your dog um, safe from the sharp plastic material. I know when Aspen was wearing this um, I had bruises on my legs for pro probably two weeks because she kept on running into my legs and so if you don't want that make sure that you get something that's lined with plastic or lined with fabric or you can always get one of the soft cones, but they're a lot more expensive. So that would be my number one tip. All right, so the second thing that I would recommend getting is a bed that is low to the ground. So what I wound up getting is just one of these um, mats that you would normally put into a crate. So it looks like that. I'm sorry that it's so dirty. She's been using it for the past three weeks, but this really helps because it's low to the ground. They don't have to lift their legs up very high when they're trying to get into a bed. And it just basically is more comfortable for them to get into for probably the first five, six days while they're um, recovering. This is more geared towards an animal that's being spayed versus a animal that's being neutered because a neuter isn't as invasive as, as a spay. So I would highly recommend getting a kind of mat that's a little bit lower to the ground just so that they have an easier time getting into bed. 
So the third thing that I would recommend doing for a spay or a neuter is preparing some food ahead of time for them. Um, when an animal comes out of an anesthetic, usually their stomach is quite upset. It's hard for them to eat a lot of food and they tend to throw up sometimes. So what we did with Aspen is we went to the grocery store, we picked up some plain white rice, and we cooked a little bit of ground beef with it and strained off all of the fat. And basically that was her food for the first two days after surgery. It's very easy on their stomach. And what the vet will tell you to do is they'll just tell you to feed small quantities after surgery because that um, reduces the risk of having them vomiting up their food. So what we did is basically we took what we would feed her, split it up into about seven portions and then fed her throughout the day. So that's another thing that I would recommend doing. Okay. So the next thing oh. that I... Oh, really? Come here. Come here. Come say hi. Oh, hello. You want the paper? I know. Okay. I'm just going to finish and then we're going to go outside and play. Okay? <laughs> so the next thing that I'm going to go over are some questions that I would recommend asking your veterinarian. Um, Basically, these questions are to make sure that the veterinarian is a good quality veterinarian versus not so good of quality. And the reason why I'm going over these questions is because we did not have a very good experience with Aspen's spay. And some of the questions I never even thought about asking because I had never seen what happened until it happened. Um, so the first question that I would recommend asking is what is included with your package. So normally a vet clinic will have a spay or a neuter package and you pay that flat rate and the animal gets spayed or neutered. Um, a lot of times packages can vary on what they've got. So I would ask and see what they offer. Um, usually with a spay, depending on the age, it should at least have IV access in it, so the actual procedure will be included, but a lot of times it varies on whether or not the animal is getting fluids during the procedure. And especially with a spay, with such an invasive procedure, um, I, I personally feel better having IV access. It's not just because fluids help the animal with processing the anesthetic and with maintaining blood pressure but it's because there is a method for that veterinarian to administer drugs if needed at a very quick rate because if anything goes wrong um, you're going to want IV access in your animal. So I would highly recommend figuring out whether or not your package includes IV access as well as the spay, pain medication, and also blood work. So depending on the animal's age, you're gonna wanna do some pre-anesthetic blood work to see whether or not the kidneys and the liver can process the anesthetic properly, to see if there's any underlying conditions that could inhibit the animal's ability to go through that procedure. So I would highly recommend figuring out what's included in the package because a lot of times you might see a price that's a lot lower but in the end when you look at what is included in that package you're getting a lot less for your money because a lot of vet clinics will just offer the spay and then you can add on different things if you want it um, whereas some vet clinics offer a full package deal and it winds up being a lot cheaper so that would be my um, other tip that you should probably ask your veterinarian about the second thing is whether or not pain medications are sent home. So a lot of vets, they'll give an injection of pain meds and sorry, I keep on looking at her because I think that she's trying to steal something and she's got something in her mouth right now. Just a second. So here's the girl of the hour. Hey, baby girl. Do you feel better now? Yes, you do. Oh my. No biting. Come on. No biting. Oh, hello. Someone just woke up. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Hey, can you speak? Good girl. You feeling better? Speak. Yeah. Good girl. High five. Oh, that was a weird high five. High five again. 
High five. High five. Good girl. Okay, yeah. going through this quickly because um, I don't have space on my memory card. So pain meds, you want to figure out whether or not you're being given just a pain injection for your pet or if you get a pain injection at the clinic as well as pain meds to go home. Um, there's a big difference. It depends on what you want for your pet. Um, either way can be okay, uh, but you might want to figure out what you're getting for your money. So the next thing that I would recommend asking your veterinarian is about the method that they use to close up the animal. Um, so Aspen was closed up using a surgical adhesive, so skin glue is what, she, what was used on her. And quite frankly, for the six years that I've worked in vet clinics, I've never once seen an animal closed up with a surgical adhesive that was on a spay. Um, I've seen it used in neuters before because the incision is so tiny, but with such a large incision, I've never once seen it happen. Um, some people feel like it's a good way to close up an incision site, some people don't. I honestly don't. Um, the vets that I've worked with have never closed using that method, and quite frankly, the one vet that I worked for that was um, meticulous in her work would be mortified by the method that was used on my dog. Um, the issues that I have with a surgical adhesive are that, um, first of all, the closure is not as good. So you can get a lot of puckering if it's not done properly. And on top of that, you can have issues like what happened to my dog. So my dog basically had internal sutures that were sticking out. Now, when I say internal sutures, Every animal that gets spayed has internal sutures because you have to go through the muscle tissue as well as through the skin to have access to the ovaries and the uterus. And so in every animal, that mus muscle layer gets closed up using internal sutures. The issue that I have with a surgical adhesive is that number one, you can have allergic reactions to it. Number two, if your animal is licking a lot at the incision site, the enzymes in the saliva can help break down that surgical adhesive. So it's not as stable, in my opinion, as suture material. And that's just coming from what I've heard from veterinarians that I've worked with and my experience. Um, where I've seen it used is in spay neuter clinics where they process a lot of animals through surgeries at a very fast pace. So it's basically a way for a veterinarian to close an animal up very quickly um, to be done with the surgery. And my personal opinion is that I would rather have a veterinarian that spends the time closing up my animal with beautiful external sutures that bring together the skin properly. And with an Australian Shepherd, I was very scared that that incision would open up. Thank goodness it did not. We were very careful though with her. We didn't let her off leash at all um, for two weeks. And we, we were just very careful. But the incision itself did not heal very well. Um, I will try and insert a picture here at some point. But it did not heal very well. There's two large lumps on each end of the incision site where the skin was puckered um, and also that internal suture material that was used inside was sticking out um, in a couple of spots on that incision line which caused a indent to form in my dog. Basically, I was very scared that a hernia was going to pop up. Um, but yeah, so she's got this almost belly button looking thing because the internal suture material was sticking out of the incision that had been closed up and basically caused all of the scar tissue to kind of form rings around it. Um, I don't know if I'm explaining it properly. Hopefully you can see it in the picture that I put in. But 
I honestly don't feel that that's a great way to close up your animal. Um, you can do the research on your own online, figure out what you want, but I would highly recommend figuring out what the veterinarian uses because that's something that I had never thought about asking just because in six years of experience I had never once seen a spay closed using that method. So I thought that that was only used in spay and neuter clinics, but obviously I was I was wrong. Um, so yeah, ask your veterinarian what they use and whatever you feel comfortable with, go for. All right, so I think that's gonna wrap it up. Um, I covered most of what I wanted to cover. And uh, if you have any other questions, you can always just leave them in the comments down below and I'll try and get to them. Um, sometimes YouTube doesn't allow me to comment on certain people's comments. So as long as your settings are set to uh, the place where I can comment back, I will try to comment. Um, yeah, and if you liked this video, you can always give it a thumbs up. And if you feel like you would like to, then you can always subscribe as well. Um, I'm trying to think of other videos that I should put up. I'm thinking about doing a pro and con video on spaying and neutering your animal. If you feel like that's something you would like to see, please comment, let me know. Um, and yeah, I, I think that covers everything. So thank you for watching and um, see you later. Bye.